Joel, the second chapter, and I want you to look at uh, verse 25. And we'll go back and forth for a minute, but look at verse 25. Joel, 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 the second chapter, verse 25. God gives us, I know it's Old Testament, he gives us promise, I'll parallel it with the New Testament. He does give us promise, but to kind of shed some light on some stuff, they didn't just get here just because they got here. If you read it and study the book of Joel, they got there because they separated themselves from glory to God, from worshiping God and honoring God. That's what he wants to do. He wants to stop you from worshiping and honoring God through making you not believe God is going to come through. Making you get out of faith, get in doubt and fear, and make a human move. That's good right there. That's why I paused. Because a minute put something in our face to make us believe that God is not going to come to us. He said, I will. Now, this is after the fact. This is after you suffered loss because God can't restore something that has not been broken up, tore down, messed up, or damaged. So you're in a situation where something is damaged, something is hurting, something is bothering, something you're going through, something. You're in a state, glory God, would not ever evaluate. All they kept doing was focusing on their loss, but they never focused on why they were losing. Wow. Sometimes, well, Pastor, are you saying that you're losing because you did something? No. Glory to God. You're going through because the enemy wants you to doubt God. Some of us are going through because we're running that stop sign. So he says this. He says, I'm going to restore to you. Now listen at this. The years. And that's that's what I want to zoom on. The word years. Some of y'all are talking about, it just seems like I've been going through for years. Yeah. It takes a moment for, for the things that God has sent to devour up our lives. It takes a minute. Why? Now I believe that all these particular pests did not have to come had we listened. Yeah. It took years to lose it all. Yeah, right. Right. But when God sent, glory to God, the palmer worm, we didn't pay attention to repentance and didn't change. Still trying to have those people and those things in our lives. Wow. Situations in our lives. Why? We're holding on to something that God wants us to disconnect from. It didn't happen. The locusts didn't all come at one time. They came at separate times. Right. And the enemy, he's coming at separate times, being be, given permission from God to come at separate times to get our attention, but we want, he wants. How many times God has told you, well, pastor, because that's how we look at it as a woman, glory to God, or a man, it has told you, God said, I need you to be faithful. But we haven't did it yet. That's the canker worm. Coming to eat up everything. Why? Because God is saying, I need you to do something in order for me to do something. Does any of this make any sense? Amen. Glory to God. He said, it took years to do this. He says, I'm going to restore you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, these are different seasons in your life, different circumstances in your life. My great army which I sent among you, I'm going to bring you to plenty. I'm going to bring you to plenty, but I cannot bring you to plenty in the state that you're in. Mm -hmm. I can't bring you to plenty in the state that I'm in. I got to get your mind ready. I have to get your life ready. How many of us don't raise your hand? Is your life ready? And if your life isn't ready, how many of you all care to even get it ready? Wow. I wanted to show you something, glory to God, uh, that I, I, I'm just going to show it to you anyway, that God wants to do. He says this, now I want you to go to um, Joel, just flip back one to Joel 1. And I want to show you, I want to show you this. I wasn't going to go there. Put three up or, or four. Just put four up. Just jump right on to it. Four. Joel 1, 4. He says that, that which the palmer worm hath left, the locust. Now see, this is letting you know, glory to God, 
that it is in seasons. He said, whatever the palmer worm have left, the locust is going to eat it. And that which the locusts have left, the canker worm is going to eat it. And that which the canker worm have left, the caterpillar is going to eat it. Unless you awake. Now, I find this amazing. He says, awake ye drunkards and weep and howl all you drink of wine, drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. Now, God said this. He said, these are going to come in section. Whatever is not devoured, I'm going to send another one to devour it. He, then he tells them, I need you to wake up. Now, you would think after God threatened you that you're going to lose everything and you're going to lose it in seasons, that when he says, wake up, you will wake up so he would never have to start the process. But they thought God was playing and allowed him to start the process that they could not receive good. Zion. 
That's God's perfect place, God's holy place. That's right. Are y'all here? Yes. Amen. So he says this. He says, look, I'm going to deliver you for Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverers. But yet we don't get high enough. You don't get high enough to see what God is doing in your life, and I don't get high enough to see what God is doing in my life because we're so low with depression and distress that we don't have time to hear God because we think God is not an on time God because you're not an on time people. Oh, wow. If God treated us like we treated our debt collectors, come on. Can't get blood from a turnip. I'm doing the blessed best I can. You can get it when I get it. When God said, I got a lot of people I got to take care of. You get it when I get it. <laughs> wow. God said it is him that gives us the ability to get well. Yet we won't pray for it. It is him. He draws nigh to those that are broken heart and a contrite spirit. He draws nigh, but we won't let him get close. The closer he gets to us, the more we change, the more we, our view change, the more our perspective change, the more we begin to do things differently, but we don't allow him to get close. Draw not to him. He'll draw not to you. Are you is this making any Amen. sense? But we won't let him get close. Nobody said, I don't want to be in a relationship, glory to God, where you don't want to spend time with me. I'm not talking just time on the telephone and texting and all of that. I need some face-to-face -face time. This is God's house, and you don't want to give him face-to-face -face time. Jesus. Jesus. But you want him to give you supernatural blessings. All right. All right. I had somebody who called me over and over and over and over and over again. This is years ago. I never answered the phone to their text. I never did. Eventually, what do you think happened? Uh, why? Because you're not getting a response. Oh, but I do like you. I just ain't had time. But I'm going to get with you. Lack of response is why you're getting nothing. God is calling you, reaching out to you, luring you, glory to God, uh, uh, leading you, trying to lead you, trying to guide you, but he ain't getting nothing from you. No response. Wow. I'm going to need that. Glory to God. I'm going to need nothing else. Y'all might be excited. Y'all might, I may have a new wardrobe. I may have some new makeup. And y'all be like, oh, Pastor, you're so beautiful. Oh, that looks so good on you. Oh, Pastor. But if I walk in the room and my husband doesn't say that. Right. Right. It's a problem. I know 900 people. But 900 people told you, yeah, but the one. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got issues. That's right. Well, some of us, y'all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it to you as light as I possibly can. It's hard to get somebody to do what you want them to do in loving you when you won't love God. Mm. You mad because of how people treat you when you're treating God the exact same way. Mm. Wow. You're not excited when he shows up. Oh, man. You don't acknowledge him. And we're upset. Look, I don't know why relationships aren't working. Well, God is first. He's not thinking about you. He's not thinking about me. He is mad at God. And he's doing everything to prove you don't love him. When you start doubting God, talking about God, y'all know, I don't know if you're going to make a way. The devil say, hold on, hold on, let me go tell him. See, let me tell you, I know God, you got good ears, but let me tell them, let me tell them. Now, they said they don't know if you're going to come through. So give me two more weeks to mess with their finances. Wow. Because they need to learn how to trust you, Father. You. <laughs> you think he means that? No, he don't mean that. He just he's the accuser he's of the brother. Right. Some of y'all sit up there talking, it look like the world got it better. They do. Why would he mess with his own? Come yeah. on now. Come on. He'll mess with his own. I don't know if God loved me. 
me. Well, if he didn't love you, he wouldn't be bothering you. Right. You're being bothered because God is in you. Is this making me bothered? Don't worry about the world. They're going to get there. Let them live it on up. Let them do whatever they want. Let them not believe. Let them whatever. But at the end of the day, they're going to get there. You either suffer here right now and you rule and reign with him later or you can rule and reign down here and you're going to suffer later. Whichever one, you take your life. Choose how you want it to fall. At least this is temporary. That's forever. Do you want to mess around and mess up your forever? You're being attacked for my sake, gospel sake, for my name's sake, because the enemy is mad at me, mm -hmm. yeah. not you. Yeah. Have your children ever, I am closing for real, have your children ever walked in the room and you were mad, you really weren't mad at them this particular time, they didn't do nothing, but you was mad at whatever, Come on, yeah. and they walked in the room, what do you want? And they're looking at you like, well, that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. You, they're not, you're not mad at them. Right. Come on, you mad at something else. Wow. That's what's going on in our lives. The enemy is mad at God trying to shout at you because he knows he can't shout at God. Yeah. All he can do is run up to heaven and tell on you. And he is a deceiver and he is a liar. But I, the sad thing about it, the devil ain't even got to tell too many lies nowadays. Right. Because the stuff he's telling on us is true. Yeah. 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 Amen. Wow. And we can't go tell him to mind his business because we are his business. Mm -hmm. We brought him here. Wow. So he says this if you, if you go through this process, he said, he shall receive a hundredfold when, now, in this time. And what is it that you're going to receive a hundredfold? Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands. But you're going to get it with what? Persecution. But you're going to get restoration. You're going to get it restored where? He ain't talking about heaven. Some of y'all tell me, when I get to heaven, I'm going to get a new house. Well, praise God, we're all going to get a new house. What about my house right now? Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm living right here in the earth and I need God to do some stuff right here in the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So is it a possibility in closing? Is it a possibility that you and I have not properly suffered and went through is why we haven't got restoration? Mm -hmm. The years that stuff has been devouring up stuff in our lives, we haven't learned anything. We haven't learned how to be faithful. We haven't learned how to be committed. We haven't learned how to trust God. We ever learn how to get in faith? Come on here. We ever learn how to trust him? He said this in the same thing in, in, in Mark 10. He said this, with, with God, all things are possible. They said, how can, we, how can you talk about salvation? How can this be? He says, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. What do you want God to do? Why? Because you've gotten a few no's. Those no's aren't God. Those no's are the enemy trying to persuade you that God's not with you. It might be something that needs to change. I, I stand on this word. I, I stand on Psalms 23 as well. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want what I want. Now I shall not need. I shall not want. So I want, so I remind God, you're my shepherd, Lord. You said I shall not want. Right. Wow, God. Mm -hmm. Man. I stand on this. Mm -hmm. Because he says that I'm going to get houses and lands. I don't want to replace my sister, praise God, since she's here. But I'm going to get new sisters and new mothers and new fathers, new houses, new lands. Y'all real quiet. Yeah. Where? Now. 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 Why are we walking like we're defeated instead of knowing God is about to give us a hundredfold blessing for everything that you suffer for Him? That's why I don't mind suffering for Him. That's why I don't mind suffering for Him. Because He's going to give it back. Yeah. Riches and wealth shall be in my house. God, you're going to put it back. And when you put it back, you're going to put it back double. Amen. 
You got to grab a hold of the word of God. I'm done, but you got to grab a hold of the word of God. Change. Shift. God is going to work it out for you. Is that making any sense? Yeah. He's going to work it out for me. Amen. 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 So our God is good. Amen. 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 You can get everlasting life, but you're still here. I can't even encourage you about everlasting life if I can't encourage you to God won't give you a hundred.